Welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. No music, no bell, no none of that nonsense because I effed up and forgot to hit the record button on the show. So the show you heard earlier, well, if you caught it live, great. And if you didn't, uh, you won't be able to catch it again. Part of the problem was I was trying to implement a new thing because new things are new or something. And that being a pre-show and during commercial break access to Periscope to kind of take a look at what was going on behind the scenes and whatnot. And the quickly, energetically drained Lucas DeSangro alongside here with me, you look whooped. What can I say? It was just a long couple. It's been a long week, you know. But I'm glad I got to do the show. It just sucks that it didn't save. So now we have to do like a condensed It's like a yeah, version. mini version of the show. We're talking about a, a bunch of different fun things here. So uh, I guess on the downside, well, you won't be able to... Actually, you know, I'll just toss the page that has the various reads. You know the deal. George's Cards and Collectibles, Broken Goblet Brewery, and Monster Factory. There, got those out of the way quick. Yeah. <laughs> if you listen on a weekly basis, you know what they are. I just change up the different things. That's... If not, well, just go back to our archives. and uh, Exactly, as the Caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland said. Hmm. At least I think it was the Caterpillar. And uh, it's a quote of the Cheshire Cat. As you may have noticed, I'm not all there myself. <laughs> Accurate. All right, let's get into some various quick things here, uh, various news and notes and things that we talked about on the show that now we're going to talk about on the Show. Abbreviated show. Again, yes. Yeah. The show, as Gary Vaynerchuk would say. Wow, I'm getting a Gary V reference in there. Holy Jeez. smokes. Anyway, so an autopsy confirmed that former ECW star Axel Rotten, a.k.a. Brian Knighton, died from an accidental drug overdose, according to the Baltimore Sun. Uh, Knighton died on February 4th in a restaurant bathroom in Maryland. He was 44 years old. Damn, that sucks. Yeah. It really is. Uh, it's a shame. And demons be demoning. Yeah. I don't know. I was trying to find a way to not be as somber about it and try to get at least a little bit of a chuckle out there, and that was the best I came up with. I just don't think in a subject like this there needs there should be a chuckle. It, it as as much as it sucks, it's it's quite morbid news. Um, well, no, it no is. I mean, he it. he did have a lot of uphill battles, not just with demons, but he also had an issue uh, with his back. He was very active on social media, interacting with a lot of people, and it's a, it's always a shame when you see somebody who leaves this world, wrestling or not, at that young of an age. Yeah, it's also the fact that it just it it's just losing somebody because of. Because of drugs and, and addiction and stuff like that. It's yeah. Well, I mean, I, I will say that also, while it hasn't directly hit closer to home, I feel like it will eventually, and that's as much as I'm going to get into about that. But That's all I have to say. Yeah, that's that. all I have to say about that. Thank you. I'm going to completely force gump the hell out of that. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to our next uh, piece of chocolate in the box here as far as the news goes. <laughs> Speaking of chocolate. Well, uh, actually, yes. Mark Henry, sexual chocolate, as he as he was back in the day, formerly known as formerly known as sexual chocolate. Mark Henry confirming on Twitter that he suffered a rib injury during his match against Big E on Monday's Raw, uh, tweeting the ever eloquent "Hey guys, I'm okay. Hurt rib. I'll live." Man of many words. Well, it's because he, you know, got a. Uh, there's Character a reason he's it. the world's strongest man. He's he's so busy, you know, lifting and whatnot. He didn't have time to be. You know, anybody got time for tweeting? To quote Roddy Piper, I know what you mean. Big body, small brain. That's not, I'm not saying he's stupid, but that's like the, you know, world's strongest man. The thoughts and opinions expressed are solely those of Lucas DeSangro and in no way reflect uh, They're not even the views of Lucas DeSangro. I was just quoting Roddy Piper. It's not me. Either way, Mark Henry don't kill either of us. Uh, <laughs> Please don't. Um, yeah. we, we don't like, go after it. We, li- we like Mark Henry. We, we like Mark Henry very much. How many times have I referenced that salmon jacket? A lot. Love that salmon jacket. Especially in the uh, especially in the events of Daniel Bryan retiring. Yeah, fairly recently. I know. That's, it's. I feel like that's going to be a running gag in the show, the salmon jacket. 
Maybe uh, we'll get one for Nutsy. Maybe we'll even get one for uh, Wade Barrett. It's like, oh, get the salmon jacket out for... <laughs> Why not? We've got future endeavoring for when somebody uh, gets fired and when somebody uh, retires, we can get the... Uh... No, not May Young, you dummy. Um... <laughs> no, we definitely don't want to get May Young for everybody who retires. Yeah, that's uh, it's bad. Playing the role of May Young will be Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've gone so off the GD rails. Um <laughs> All right. Uh, in other news, sometimes it's not so good to be the king, despite what uh, Mel Brooks has said. Jerry Lawler claiming his endorsement of WWE Celebrity Hall of Famer and presidential candidate Donald Trump has led to him receiving death threats. And, uh, yeah, like I said earlier on the live show, it's it doesn't matter. I'm no in no way a Donald Trump supporter. I, I'm really not. But at the same time, there's no reason to send him or anybody else that supports him death threats. There's no excuse. It really isn't. It, it just it's it baffles me that people would go so far. Uh, yeah, I certainly agree. Uh, th- that report, according to WMC TV in Memphis, Lawler telling the TV station that sending the tweet probably wasn't the best idea, and he intends to stay out of politics. That's sad. To give you an idea of how old school I am, if Trump ends up uh, becoming president, uh, do you think that his speech will involve the old jingle for? Uh, you're the king, you're the king of the castle. The old Trump, I know, this is way beyond your time, and I'm going back to something from even when I was a kid, when uh, there was the Trump Castle property in Atlantic City. It was a hotel casino. Ah. Yeah, that is that is a very vague reference that pretty much anybody, like, 40 and older will probably get more so than anyone else. There are two reasons that I know about it. One was from that, and another, which goes completely, again, in an odd direction. Uh, When Rip Taylor was on an episode of Super Password, he was wearing a Trump Castle... T-shirt. ...jacket. Which kind of looked a lot like the... um, What's that Japanese steak place jacket? The the Ribera Steakhouse Steakhouse jacket. Yeah, it kind of looked in that style. Hmm. But it was, but yeah, it was, it was a uh, a Trump castle jacket during his infamous uh, testimony uh, clip, which is a very notable uh, game show blooper clip. Just look up Rip uh, Super Password testimony, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So of course, after the show, of course, we're going to go over to the computer here, and and Lucas is going to check it out because he puts up with crap like that from me. Yeah, but you'll laugh at this. I swear, it's 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 hysterical. Uh, uh, okay. Your reluctance is adorable. I'll take, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> oh, gosh. In some brighter news, WWE Network greenlighting a new program called Global Cruiserweight Series. That's going to be very excited for that. It's a tournament that brings o- together over 30 of the greatest in-ring competitors at Full Sail University in Orlando to vie for the right to call themselves the best cruiserweight in the world. Global Cruiserweight Series set to premiere Wednesday, July 13th at 9 p.m. Eastern on the WWE Network. That That's going to be... that. I'm definitely going to watch that. That'll, For somebody that, who didn't get to watch the Cruiserweights in WCW, even though I can, it's I would much rather watch it live. You know, like, that's going to be... I can't wait to see who they would bring in. Maybe they might even bring Jushin Liger. Ooh, well, they brought him in for NXT. Why not? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's meant to be like the greatest up and coming cruiserweights or, you know, cruiserweights from the past, present, and future. We might even see maybe Kenny Omega. Ooh. I mean, they did call, call out him and the Young Bucks called out the New Day, apparently. Huh. Yeah. Might we even see Twitch? Ah, maybe it's a little early. For yeah, that. I was going to say. Just a little early. Just uh, a lot. Maybe the Global Cruiserweight Series 2019. Well, I mean, hopefully they would make it a recurring thing. Yeah, possibility. We'll see. Uh, Also, some bad news for WWE. As Wade Barrett has informed WWE, he does not intend to re-sign with the company once his contract expires in June. That's according to ProWrestlingSheet.com. Once the story broke on Wednesday, Barrett took to Twitter to state, quote, I unexpectedly received a lot of very nice messages from people today. Thank you to everyone who took the time to write some kind words. I'll comment further at a more appropriate time, but for now I'm 100% focused on doing my job for WWE. See you at Fastlane on Sunday. It's, uh, you know, bad news, uh, Wade, it, he shouldn't be surprised he got such a, some, some nice messages. Bad News Barrett is like a beloved 
beloved staple of the WWE fans, you know, like over the yeah, he's been he's gotten an underground swell of popularity just by taking whatever he was given and trying to make the best of it. And he really did. Uh very much akin to John Tenta with his career, whether it was Earthquake, whether it was The um, Shark. Yeah. Wasn't he also the Shockmaster? Uh, no, 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 no. That was Earthquake's partner, Typhoon, Total. Tugboat, mm. uh, um, Fred Ottman, mm. who had the Shockmaster gimmick that was um, infamously infamous, for lack of a better term. Infamously infamous. I'm just making stuff up as I go along here. Uh, except for the news. that uh, That is legitimate, though. I don't make the news up. I wouldn't dare do a thing like that. Oh, yeah. There are some people. Yeah, who am I, Geraldo? I was going to, who are you, Fox News? or? Oof. All commentators heard here on W. No. You uh, already did that shtick. Well, yeah, but they didn't get it for the, well, yeah, we're not really taking commercial no, breaks. This is just kind of, this is almost more of a podcast episode because I effed up. Yeah. I, I can I can hear the ECW crowd now. Ch- you effed up. You effed up. You effed up. That's kind of how I feel like right now. Only they wouldn't have said effed, but I'm still in radio mode because I have a microphone in front of my face. Yeah, it's always a good way to be. Exactly. That way you can't slip up. Yeah. I've 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 seen. I was actually on an, another program uh, down the radio dial. I shouldn't say on a program, but I was observing a program, and they had some folks from a tattoo convention in, and uh, one of them. Dropped an f bomb right with the uh, the mic in front of their face. How they dumped it, I don't know because again we were there live, so we didn't hear the actual feed. But um, yeah, very very nice, uh, very nice studio down there in Balakinwood, and that's as much as I'll say without getting into potential trouble there. That's all I have to say about that. Exactly. Uh, somebody who is definitely not at a loss for words, though, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oof. That's right. He and actor-comedian Kevin Hart, they've been named co-hosts of the MTV Movie Awards. The event will be taped on April 9th, which is the Saturday after WrestleMania, and will air the following night, April 10th, on MTV at 8 p.m. Eastern, according to Entertainment Weekly. The Rock and Kevin Hart, they're starring in the film Central Intelligence, set to be released in theaters on June 17th. And because we all know how I am about movies, you can pretty much bet that uh, I'll end up not seeing it. Not out of you know disrespect to either of them. I'm just I'm just not a movie guy. Oh, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I get I'm picking up what you're putting down. You're picking up what I'm putting down. Very good. Yeah, hopefully Orlando there. Well, Orlando's hoping to uh, the WWE's picking up what they're putting down because as, as the time is presumably drawing near to announce the location of 2017's WrestleMania spot, host city, it appears but isn't confirmed that Orlando may end up being the host for WrestleMania 33 next year. And you can just hear the collective groan of fans across Philadelphia. Yeah, groan or maybe some more F-bombs, who knows. Orlando's Mayor Buddy Dyer spoke with the Miami Herald with high confidence that Orlando would be announced for either WrestleMania 33 next year or Mania 34 in 2018, adding, quote, I was part of our proposal for the events as well. I don't think they've had many mayors who have come to Stanford, WWE's headquarters in Connecticut, to make the pitch for WrestleMania, so there's some mutual admiration going on. Wonder if he used taxpayer funds to go up to Stanford. I'm kidding. Holy wow. smokes. Orlando Citrus Bowl played host to WrestleMania 24 in 2008 and since then underwent $207 million in renovations. Also helping their cause is that Mayor Dyer has been to the WWE Performance Center in Orlando to build a relationship with WWE staff in Florida. I mean, let's put it this way. I'm not exactly upset. I mean, it, it, if WrestleMania is not going to be in Philly, it's it stinks. But still, WrestleMania in Orlando, especially with the, what NXT has been putting out, that that's it, the that's going to be electric. It really it, will. It be. seems like it. It just it's a perfect fit. It really does. And no wonder the mayor is confident. Can't say as I blame him. Someone else who should at least have a little bit of confidence, despite his current situation, James Laurinaitis. Mm. The reason being, well, the bad news, ProFootballTalk.com reporting that the NFL's Los Angeles Rams have cut linebacker James Laurinaitis yesterday. He, of course, is the son of Road Warrior Animal and the nephew of WWE executive and on-air personality John Laurinaitis. People power. Mm -hmm. 
Before you start speculating whether he'll join the wrestling ranks, though, he's 29 years old. He's never missed a game during his NFL career, which is, what, about six or seven seasons now? And finished his run with the former St. Louis team as their all-time leading tackler. Mm. So he shouldn't have trouble finding a new NFL team. Wouldn't look too bad there as one of the uh, linebackers in Jim Schwartz's new 4-3 defense for the Eagles. Yeah, maybe. Just just yeah, throwing well, that out there. Yeah. I'd probably even go to a game and wear Road Warrior spikes if that were the case with a Laurinaitis jersey. Yeah. Also, a Google Translate controversy where we were having some fun with this earlier. Something that was discovered by the good old interwebs this past week was that someone went to Google Translate, typed in Sami Zayn, translating it from English to Arabic, and then copied the Arabic symbols to translate to English, and it appeared as El Generico. Ole, 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 ole. Yeah. Now, not to burst the bubbles of wrestling fans everywhere, including you, Twitch, because I know you were um, aghast at this when you saw it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, I'm going to be that Richard. Mm -hmm. But it's apparent that one of the programmers for Google Translate must be a huge wrestling fan. Here's why. Along with that coincidence, and I use that in inverted commas, there are other instances where wrestler names are translated from different languages. Most specifically, Galician. Mm. A language spoken in the extreme northwestern part of Spain and the northernmost part of Portugal. Supposedly translating Galician to English, Finn Balor translates to Prince Devitt. Kevin Owens translates to Kevin Steen. Oh, God. Oh, I, I've got a, I've got boatloads of these. Glenn Jacobs apparently translates to Kane. Paul White translates to The Big Show. Adam Copeland translates to Edge. Mark Calloway translates to The Undertaker. Monty Sopp translates to Billy Gunn. Amy Duma translates to Lita. Peter Polacco translates to Just Incredible, which is disheartening because I would have thought it would have translated to Aldo Montoya because, you know, it is Portuguese, but I'm just saying. Oh, you. Oh, me. Victoria Crawford translates to Alicia Fox. Itori Ewan translates to Big E Langston. Wait, that's his actual name? Yep, E-T-T-O-R-E-E-W-E-N. Jesus. Wyndham Rotunda translates to Bray Wyatt. All in Galician. Who knew? Taylor Rotunda translates to Bo Dallas. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, mercy. Claudio Castanoli translates to Antonio Cesaro. Aaron Haddad translates to Damian Sandow. Wait, what's his name? Aaron Haddad. Oh, I thought for some reason I thought you said Avin Haddad. No, Aaron. A-A-R-O-N-H-A-D-D-A-D. Hmm. It's almost like a Jeff Jarrett bit there. Double A R O N H A double D A D. Mm. Yeah, but that doesn't quite work as the same way as Double J Jeff Jarrett. Queen. Yeah. Natalie Neidhart translates to Natalia. Jonathan Good translates to Dean Ambrose. Oh, of course it does. Joseph Rude translates to R Eric Rowan. I feel like I'm reading the the thousand and four holds for Chris Jericho here. Number five, armbar translates to arm lock. <laughs> Ryback translates to mid card. Y2J translates to seasonal. And impact translates to empty. There we go. Taking the John from Northeast Philly joke over from the show and bringing it into here as well. Uh, Milena Roca translates to Rosa Mendez. Dylan Postal translates to Hornswoggle. Mm. Do you want me to keep going or are you pretty much done with this at this point? No, you can keep... You can keep uh... You can keep like, going, no, please. I'm exhausted, but just keep on going. Please sure. Keep you, going. Richard. Go F. Um, Dustin Rhodes translates to Gold Dust. Jake Hager translates to Jack Swagger. Stu Bennett translates to Wade Barrett. Mike Mizanin translates to The Miz. Ryan Reeves to Ryback. Colby Lopez to Seth Rollins. Daniel Moyne to Summer Ray. Daniel Moyne. Did I, what did I say? Daniel. Oh, I didn't. I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Apparently, Danielle Monet to Summer Ray, Stephen Farrelly to Seamus, hmm. Theodore Wilson to Tyson Kidd, Matthew Cardona to Zach Ryder, Darren Matthews to William Regal, Booker Huffman to Booker T, Hideo Itami to Kenta Kobayashi. Well, you, you get the idea. Yeah, I already gave you what, like thirty-two of those, something like that. Oh yeah. 
Now, this isn't the first time that a Galatian trans or Galician translation through Google has caused controversy. Spaniards were livid after Google Translate goofed back in November on an advertisement for their popular Rapini Festival. Rapini is a leafy vegetable best known here in the States, uh, especially here in South Philly, as Broccoli Rob. Mm. Now, the Galician term for Rapini, grelo, translated out to clitoris. <coughs> You're such a teenager. Because you, you pre, yeah, you, I just say the word clitoris and you start giggling. Or maybe it's just because the story was funny, but I think it might be the former. So, yes, fans were invited to the, uh, according to the translation, fans were invited to the Clitoris Festival. <laughs> and most of the guys there couldn't find it. I guess you missed the invite. I didn't get an invite. You didn't get an invite? It's okay. I didn't either. <laughs> Shut up. I did. <laughs> just... Jeez. One of those moments where I just, I just, uh, that was my smile and gleam moment right there. All righty. Um, we'll close this out here because we've already, wow, we've already gone way longer than I thought we were going to with this. Yeah. Um, you're like, yeah, you Richard. All right. Today in wrestling history, real quick, this date in 1989, the NWA held its Chi Town Rumble pay per view. In the main event, Ricky Steamboat pinned Ric Flair to win the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 1994, WCW held its Super Brawl 4 pay-per-view. Mm. In the main event, Ric Flair defeated Vader in a Thunder Cage match to retain the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 2000, WCW held its Super Brawl 2000 pay-per-view. Because everything had to have a 2000 in it back then. Because millennium. In the main event, Sid Vicious defeated Scott Hall and Jeff Jarrett in a triple threat match to retain the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 2005, WWE held its No Way Out pay-per-view. In the main event, John Bradshaw Layfield defeated The Big Show in a barbed wire steel cage match to retain the WWE Championship. Mm-hmm. He was not having fun on Sunday Night Mackle. Mm-hmm. And on this date in 2011, WWE held its Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. In the main event, John Cena defeated CM Punk, John Morrison, Sheamus, Randy Orton, and R-Truth in an Elimination Chamber match to earn a WWE Championship match at WrestleMania 27. Mm. So there you have it today in wrestling history, February 20th. Bum, bum, ba-da-dum, bum, ba-da-dum. Ba-bum. Yeah, it felt right. Also, uh, well, well, let's see. Do we want to do predictions first and then birthdays? Yeah, sure. I have no clue. All right, predictions for Fast Lane. So we already mentioned, or well, we mentioned on the other show, I don't think we mentioned on this one, the New Day featured on the Cutting Edge Peep show. Hmm. Kind of a an introduction to Ed, Edge and Christian being uh, on the WWE Network with their uh, show that totally reeks of awesomeness or something like that. Almost as much awesomeness as we have. Hmm. Yeah. Almost. That's not true. All right. Pre-show match, Callisto and Del Rio. In a two out of three falls match, my favorite, for the U.S. Championship. Kalisto. That's where I'm going to. Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch against Naomi and Tamina. Uh, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. Yeah, I know. I keep going to you first because, I don't know, I just defer to you first. Sasha Banks, that's where I'm going with it as well. AJ Styles and Chris Jericho. Should be a good match. Styles. Yeah, I got to keep the push going with him. I'm agreeing with you on that one. Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental title. Uh, Owens. Yeah, I'm thinking Owens retains as well. Charlotte and Brie Bella for the Divas Championship. Mm. Um, uh, Brie Bella. You think that she uh, brings the Divas title to Yeselmania with her uh, husband retiring? Yeah. Yeah, I do say that. Sorry to keep you awake. Charlotte, I think, is going to retain on that one. Ryback Kane in the Big Show against the Wyatt families, Braun Strowman, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan. The Wyatts. I'm following the buzzards on that as well. And the main event, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Brock Lesnar in a number one contender match. The winner will take on Triple H at WrestleMania Star. Now, I've got to say, the way they've been um, presenting it, it looks like Dean Ambrose is going to win it. Um, but then again, they just brought in Paul Heyman at the last second to put over Roman Reigns, so I wouldn't be surprised if Reigns won it either. But I'm going to go with Ambrose. I'm going to go with what appears blatantly obvious, and even though the... Well, uh, where's this pay-per-view? Isn't it in Cleveland or something like that? Yeah. I don't think that the Cleveland fans are as... 
I want to say as diehard, but I don't think they're as vehement for fast lane as they would be at, say, a Royal Rumble or WrestleMania. So I don't think they're necessarily going to boo as vehemently if Reigns wins. So I think it is going to be Roman Reigns. You never know, though. Well, of course you never know. I mean, that's what makes this whole thing fun. This is also Dean Ambrose's home state. Which is a double-edged sword. Sometimes uh, if you're in your home state or hometown or whatever, you end up uh, being more apt to job out. Yeah, that's not. That, but I'm saying, like, just seems like if Ambrose is going to win it and go to WrestleMania. It seems like a good moment on the way. No, that, that certainly makes sense. Can't, it, well, I was going to say we can go wrong either way. It could be Lesnar and we both look like schmucks, but yeah. that's a whole other uh, uh, part of the story. All right, we got like a minute here for... Your favorite segment, birthdays. There we go. Uh, on this date in 1921, Herman Gustav Rowe Jr. was born. The WWE Hall of Famer, first ever WWF champion, known as the Nature Boy Buddy Rogers, passed away in 1992 at the age of 71. And it was he and Larry Sharp who initially put together the Monster Factory. How about that? A little uh, did you know. On this date in 1943, Kanji Inoki was born. Antonio Inoki? That would be the one. The WWE Hall of Famer and founder of New Japan Pro Wrestling turns 73 today. How about that? And on this date in 1977, Gail Kim was born. The former WWE Women's Champion and five-time TNA Knockouts Champion as well as reigning Knockouts Champion turns 39 today. Good for her. So there we go. A show within a show. We actually went uh, about half the length of a normal show. Like We just took out all the commercials and the advertisements and... The intro and the banter and all that. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. Uh, Next week, we'll be at the Monster Factory on the 27th. That would be one week from today. Yes. We'll be broadcasting live from there prior to the huge event later that night. It is well past 1 o'clock, so forget Nutsy. Uh, Do your thing, Meryl. Serving you better than ever before. This is 1490 WBCB Levittown, Fearless Hills, Trenton.